lots of questions. On a wrestling level, I'd say I'm really excited because it's, it's hard when you add content and try and build the company, and I really believe AEW has grown, and I can't deny it, because like I said, we went from three hours of TV to five hours of TV. We're still delivering great shows week after week, and the pay-per-views have been better this year than ever before. So as far as the locker room, I really believe the AEW wrestlers stepped up this past week, and they put on a lot of miles. There's a lot of people on the show who are also in London, and a lot of people, you know, everybody traveled overseas to get to London. I mean, there's really none of the people that wrestled on the show were there already, except for Rodriguez Will Ospreay, I gotta give him that. Uh, but even he, I think, was traveling from Japan. And uh, to have a crew that worked that hard, traveled, and uh, then came here and put on another pay-per-view that was arguably the show of the year, I'm really proud of it. And I think, again, this year, when you look at the pay-per-views we've delivered across AEW and Ring of Honor, it's hard for any wrestling company in the world to say they've done better major events than AEW Revolution, uh, Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor, uh, Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor, Forbidden Door, and now just a week apart, all in and all out, and for AEW, a historic year, something different than not only anything we've ever done, but any wrestling company's ever done. I just can't put enough emphasis on we sold the most tickets of any show ever. It's really important, so it's, it's important that I mention it. Uh, and for us to follow up this week, it was really important because I think now we've set a precedent we that people know all that's going to deliver. Because there were a lot of questions of what this was going to be and how this was going to work. And to the question I got earlier, there were a lot of questions about how this was going to work out tactically. So everybody's really delivered under really high pressure circumstances. The staff and the wrestlers really had a great week here. We're going to go like 20 minutes or so, so let's uh, be brief and crisp. So you talk about wrestlers giving them opportunities. About two days ago, Sunny Kiss made a move from the AEW site. There hasn't been any, you guys haven't talked about it, Sunny hasn't talked about it. So just asking what, what happened. I really like Sunny Kiss. We have a roster of over 100 wrestlers now across AEW, and uh, Sunny is a great wrestler. I think uh, I've done a lot to really keep the locker room stable. and I have a lot of people that I not only keep under contract, but also I've done well, I think, to not do like major mass layoffs and let 20, 30 people go at a time. But I do think I can't renew every single contract in AEW. It would be impossible. And uh, with such a big roster and a limited amount of TV spots, I think Sonny Kiss is a great wrestler um, and had a lot of potential from the very beginning of AEW and still has a lot of potential as a wrestler. And I really like Sonny Kiss. Uh, I think Sonny Kiss could certainly be back, potentially, too. We've seen wrestlers. Uh, go on and do some exciting stuff and come back, like Stu Grayson, for example. So uh, you never know uh, what the future holds for Sunny Kiss or AEW, but I think Sunny Kiss has a lot of talent, and uh, I definitely wish him the best as a wrestler and still really hold Sunny in very high regard. I, it's true that I didn't renew that contract, but not because uh, I don't like Sunny. I like really, because I book all the matches and I do all the paperwork and put everything down on paper. I like Sunny a lot and everything. Every opportunity Sonny's had, every match I've booked Sonny in, I put some thought into and put it together. But I uh, would say the same with every wrestler here. And right now, with a huge crew, I think it's hard to get everybody on TV. And uh, you know, one thing that also is a challenge, to be honest, is losing dark and elevation. And it's put more of an emphasis on five hours of television. So I think some of that was made up with TV spots. So, so a lot of people have stepped up, but the roster has grown and grown. There's more wrestlers in the world when we started. It's a much, much bigger roster than the original AEW roster that Sonny was a great part of. And uh, Sonny and a number of people who are not necessarily with AEW anymore will keep an eye on them and certainly I'd be open to bringing them back. You know, if uh, something opens up, if I get an idea for a story or if anybody has an idea that I like for a story that I would do, or uh, if, they get really hot and I get interested. So uh, I think Sonny's got a lot of potential still and is a young person. So, uh, you know, definitely open to that. And Dark and Elevation, I think Sonny wrestled a lot on those shows. And uh, that's something that we don't really have right now. And uh, the TV spots are tight. So that's a lot of what it is. But certainly, Sonny's a good wrestler. Thanks. Over here, Tony. 
Hi, Tony. Uh, Kimmy Sokol from the Pop Break. So this pay-per-view was very Ring of Honor heavy. We saw a lot of the Ring of Honor champions on it. Is that something that we could see more in the future, or was this kind of like a one-time thing? I thought it was a great opportunity having the shows across these two weeks feature a lot of the great champions in wrestling across AEW, Ring of Honor, and New Japan Pro Wrestling. And that was what we did. And so there were a lot of great stars featured across this past week on All In and All Out. And tonight, a lot of the Ring of Honor champions competed. We saw some of that last week too, but even more so tonight. And the really the Ring of Honor roster right now is so strong with great champions. When you got uh, a world champion like Claudio Castagnoli, who's in a great match tonight, and a great world TV champion like Samoa Joe, who's been dominant. He right now has one of the longest reigns in the history of the ROH World TV title. He's chasing the longest reign ever. And if you look at Samoa Joe's reign, there's a lot of really good matches and really good opponents since Samoa Joe arrived. And pretty quickly after his arrival, he won the World TV title. He's defended it a lot of times against some of the top stars. And Samoa Joe's one of the top stars in wrestling. I thought it was fascinating uh, what happened in the confrontation with Samoa Joe and MJF on this pay-per-view. It was a really exciting way to get the show going. It was a really hot start. Uh, to the pay-per-view to have those two going at it after the very first match. Uh, so those are big stars. And speaking of Ring of Honor, that's another Ring of Honor champion, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, MJF and Adam Cole. MJF, top star, and the number one champion, the AEW World Champion, to have the uh, AEW World Champion holding the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship, I think is a really big deal. And then to have the AEW uh, really I have to say, not only the AEW champion, but also one of the most popular stars in wrestling right now, MJF, and to have another one of the most popular stars in wrestling, Adam Cole, teaming up. And Adam Cole has so much great history in Ring of Honor. Adam Cole's held every championship in ROH pretty much now, and uh, he's probably the most decorated star ever in ROH. So it's a great group of wrestlers. And then also Athena, I really wanted to feature tonight. She's been doing some great work with Billy Starks. I thought about getting Billy Starks in, Billy Starks wasn't cleared. And uh, I found that out yesterday, so I changed around some of the stuff I was thinking about, but I still thought it was great to get a lot of the top stars, six of the great women in AEW, including some great champions, featured on the card. And uh, of course, the Ring of Honor World Six Man Champions were a big part of the over budget charity Battle Royal, and it was great to see the money going to a good cause, because if somebody from the Mobile Embassy had won, I think Prince Nana had said it probably was not going to go to a very good cause. <laughs> and and uh, so I thought that was a lot of fun. So Ray Honor's got some great wrestlers right now, great champions, and with MJF and Adam Cole winning the World Tag Team Championship last week, that's, I mean, that's pretty massive. You have some of the top stars, in addition to Claudio, Samoa Joe, Athena, and so many other great wrestlers holding these championships. And then there's one of the great legends who we saw tonight, and somebody, it means a lot to everybody in the locker room, and me personally, every time he steps in here, and that's Katsuyori Shibata, the Ring of Honor Pure Champion. He's a great legend, and we love featuring him anytime we can. It's a really big deal uh, to have Shibata wrestling here. It's a big deal to have Shibata wrestling at all. It's a big deal anytime Shibata steps in the ring, because nobody ever thought it was gonna happen again. And now, he's part of the roster. He's a full-time wrestler in Ring of Honor. He's a great champion. Think about all the great matches Shibata's had in this past year in America with us. He's part of our roster. It's really cool Shibata's in our locker room, and that's one of the exciting things happening. So ROH has this great group of champions, so of course you want to feature them, but uh, AEW is the biggest platform in all of wrestling. We proved it over this past week, and it's great to have so many great champions we can rely on. AEW bringing people in from New Japan and other companies, and of course Ring of Honor is right here close to home. Thanks. Hey Tony. Slow <laughs> share. Yeah. Uh, so last night we saw the Young Bucks on Collision for the first time. Um, in light of recent shakeups, do you anticipate? I know we don't have like a, a firm split between the two shows in terms of the rosters, but do you anticipate maybe easing the borders and having more crossovers? Do you anticipate maybe sending a big name over to Saturday nights? Well, I think what, you know, one thing yeah, I'm interested in, Brian Danielson, like he said, I think Saturdays are probably more conducive to Brian's life, his personal life. So it's a good question. I think that's one thing we can keep in mind. Brian going to Collision, really this is the first time Brian's been cleared to go over and do anything in a while since Forbidden Door. So that was pretty cool because Collision was really just getting off the ground. We were just starting the show uh, when Brian got injured. And uh, definitely that is somebody that you could see there more often, I think. 
There's a lot of wrestlers that you can see on either show. For example, Darby Allen and Christian Cage have been straddling the line, in particular Darby Allen we've seen all over the place. I think a lot of the top stars have been appearing one place or the other, but certainly both shows have a separate identity and feel. There are some people you might see in one place more than others. Sometimes that's because it's a, maybe a more convenient night for them in their life, but also sometimes it's more just a different feel of the show, and I think somebody's more conducive uh, one way or the other. But we've got something really great going. I thought it was a great episode of Collision last night, and uh, I'm very, very excited uh, about what we've got in, You know, now with five hours of TV. So it's cool because we've been able to launch another show, make it feel different, and create a cool identity for it. But I think there's a lot of wrestlers that would fit great with what we're doing on Collision. And, and a lot of people that have really been hitting it out of the park, I think it was great. You know, Dax and Jay White had a great main event last night. I thought that was an awesome uh, main event match, a real long, classic, hard-hitting match. Uh, Christian Cage and Darby Allen had a great main event a few weeks ago, and there's been so many great main events with all the people on the show, uh, and I can hopefully keep that going for a long time. Thanks. Over here, Tony. John Hughes, Wrestling Observer. How you doing? Uh, great show tonight. Are there any business notes you can share, like uh, gate, attendance, uh, early read on the uh, paper you buy, right? Anything like that? Well, I know it was over 100,000, they told me, which was like my kind of my, my goal, because it was like, if we can do closer to 200,000 last week and come back and get 100,000 and do, you know, probably close to 300,000 pay-per-view buys in one week, that's by far the most in the history of the company in one week. Break all of our ticket sales records, I think we sold probably around, uh, I think about 100,000 tickets this week, which is pretty amazing across the shows. Uh, so that's by far a record for us. Uh, and uh, it was about 10,000 tickets tonight, and uh, I don't have the exact numbers, but I know we had about 10,000, and the gate, I think, is probably $800,000, really, really strong gate, really big. And uh, I maybe a little more, And uh, but, you know, again, to have a week where, you know, probably about $11 million, and. Uh, over $11 million in ticket sales, I guess, and uh, and over 100,000 fans is pretty cool. Uh, and definitely the biggest week in our history, but I think it's also something I believe is sustainable. And if you can do something like that every year across this week, wow, we built something really special. So people wondered what success would look like tonight. To me, that's it. I mean, if you can do close to 10,000 and sell over 100,000 on pay-per-view and you know, come in somewhere close, to that, you know, over three quarters of a million, million dollar gate range, that's a big deal. And uh, people wondered what All Out was going to be. We set a great precedent because now if we're doing All In every year and All Out, I think people know we're going to deliver a great All Out. And I think everyone really got their money's worth. The people that came to All In and everything, and uh, the, the crowds were amazing. I mean, the crowd tonight in Chicago, one of the greatest. Uh, really uh, shows we've ever done. I really believe that because there was so much pressure to have a great show tonight and coming off the huge show last week, uh, the questions of what this was going to be. And then, uh, you know, of course, last week in London, it was a magical, magical show. So really awesome. And uh, business notes, I think, like I said, I, think it, I don't know the exact number, but I would say about 10,000 fans, I think, is, is roughly it, and uh, give or take. And uh, that's great. And uh, really also, like I told you, I know we're over 100,000 on pay-per-view, which is huge because that was really a milestone. People wondered what we would do tonight, given what happened last week with a huge pay-per-view and the record number. I think uh, in the wake of that, we showed it's maybe a sustainable model, which is awesome. I think definitely a sustainable model, which is awesome. It's Tony, uh, Ricky Chino, uh, SB Nation, CapesideSeats.com. Uh, I think last year at All Out, uh, the crowd in Chicago uh, kind of launched uh, Scissor Me Daddy into the atmosphere, and tonight we saw the birth of the meat division. Uh, the <laughs> I said that myself. Yeah. I said that myself when it came back, that it felt like it was that, that at All Out last year, but that this match was that match. It was like this year's All Out winner of being crowned the match by the fans. That, yeah. You know, just like I, exactly what you just said. I said the same thing when they came back. Yeah, the, the meat division. But, you know, hearing all those different chance with them putting meat in and interchanging and doing everything in unison to this match which was great on its own but the added atmosphere of the audience with that you know as a wrestling promoter and a fan what's going through your mind as you're watching all of this unfold and also kind of a two-parter here what's the uh, all these stats on cj perry who we saw at the end of that match well uh cj i'll start with that i think it's great to have cj here I, you know it's not uh a long-term guaranteed thing or anything, but for at least for tonight, it was great to have her appearing with us, and I thought it was a great surprise. It was a great show, 
Uh, Miro and Hobbs was a match I really believed would be great for All Out, and you know it's important to have great matches on both shows. All In was a classic, and it felt like the show was perfect after everybody's with Big Ten. That was a home run show in every way. It felt like a massive spectacle. Felt like an event, cultural event, and then uh, it also was a great wrestling. And it hit every button, and then to come here and do this, I knew we'd need big matches this week. And Miro and Hobbs have been having great interactions and building excitement for the match, especially on Saturdays on Collision. And they've both been a part of the Collision show since the beginning. And it's really exciting to have them come back here to the United Center, where we had the very first episode of Collision, and both of them have been involved really most weeks on Saturdays. And now to come back here and have that match, and I think it was, for both men, I really believe one of the greatest matches of their careers. Miro's got been wrestling longer than Hobbs. And I think for both of them, though, it was one of their best matches. I'd put it up there with any match either of them has ever had. And both of them had some great ones. I think Miro here uh, had a great one with Eddie Kingston. It, uh, you know, outside the city limits uh, in uh, Hoffman Estates nearby. Uh, it's still in the great state of Illinois, and that was a great match. But. Um, there are very few matches I could put up there that either of them has ever had. It was a great, one of the best matches on one of the best shows we've ever done. So really, a uh, huge hats off to both Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs. And it was, it was a nice surprise, tip of the cap, to CJ Perry as well. Over here, Tony. Uh, hey, Tony, it's Nick Hausman. Comes for us again. Uh, I just want to ask about Jack Perry. Was there any punishment handed down to him? And do you think, do you see any punishment if there wasn't handed down yet? been suspended indefinitely. I think we've uh, suspended uh, everybody in that investigation and then uh, took further action after that based on what happened and came out of the investigation. But uh, as for Jack, uh, we suspended Jack and, uh, you know, as a participant in an incident backstage and Jack hasn't been around, but uh, that's all I can say about it. But at the time we, we did suspend him and he hasn't been at AEW since AEW all in backstage. Okay, thank you. Hi, Tony. Iridian Pierre, I'm Fightful. So we had Collision and All Out here at the United Center, but we had Dynamite and a little bit of Rampage at Hoffman Estates and the Finale Arena. So talk to me a little bit about that relationship and if we're going to lean more towards now the United Center or still stay a little bit further away from Chicago and Hoffman Estates. Is Raph back here? I'm right here. Hey, Raph, can I say, is, it, is that public knowledge that's in here next year, or is that like a secret, like it, is a secret service thing? Um, I'm not sure about that answer. Yeah? Okay. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they have something pretty big booked here next year. I may not be able to get into the United Center next year, so we'll see. I think the Now Arena is a great option, and the original home. Uh, I would love to run the United Center any and every year. I do think there's something that may be unbreakable next summer here. I'll put it that way. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, for once, I think the people at the United Center will be answering uh, uh, to the authorities uh, that are higher than those, uh, even the, the commissioner and general manager of the wrestling league. So we'll see what's coming, what's coming here next summer. But there's something pretty big coming here next summer. I think that, like I said, the kind of uh, thing is probably unbreakable. So next summer, maybe the Now Arena, we'll see where we end up. I'd like to keep this event in Chicago forever, so I'm sure I'm going to find a way to do that. I don't think it's going to be possible in 2024 to use the United Center, because I think there's something else here in 2024. Uh, yeah. Over here, Tony. Hi, Brandon, there's some response. Uh, with CM Punk being terminated, does, does a not a B period come with that that would prevent him from wrestling? I don't want to discuss the terms of the separation in that sense. I think it's uh, best to say, like, uh, first of all, I very much want to thank CM Punk Phil for everything he did for AEW as a wrestler. Uh, but I don't think it was an easy decision for anybody on the, the discipline committee or for uh, the outside counsel or for me uh, to, to do something like that. But I do think uh, it was the right move. And uh, as far as what's going to happen in the future, I can't uh, speak to that, but I'm not the, uh, the attorneys who interpret all that language and stuff. Thanks. Hey, Tony, Dominic, and Angel, uh, inside the ropes. Uh, I wanted to kind of get more perspective. Uh, Jeff Jarrett's been a pretty big factor, I think, in AEW over the 
past uh, year and coming in and everything like that. Kind of wanted to get more of a perspective of how you, what you've learned from him, like from his promoting aspect, and as well as uh, his ability to kind of tell a story in a match as well. Uh, what, what have you learned from him? Well, I feel really strong, Jeff. So not only a great mind, he's a great wrestler. Um, AEW is completely different than a lot of the pro wrestling promotions that have come before it in a lot of ways. I think uh, Jeff had so much great experience in pro wrestling, and Jeff is very different than a lot of the other wrestlers in AEW. He's a great wrestler. He's such a smooth pro wrestler. He, it, no matter what time it is, he's a very timeless, great wrestler. I saw Jeff and Jay wrestling on the Ric Flair's last match pay-per-view, and Jay Lethal was already here, and I had said he could work that show. Uh, and they were great as a team, and Jeff could really go, and I was like, man, Jeff Jarrett could really still go. And he had interest in working backstage, too, in the office, and working on some live events, and uh, business development stuff, and Jeff's got a great mind for that stuff, and a lot of great experience, so I thought he'd be great for that, and has great connections, live events, experience. So I like having Jeff in the office, and he's got a great mind. I do things differently, and so, you know, I think, you know, TNA is a very different company than AEW. I think uh, as far as the history of pro wrestling, some of the greatest stuff ever done in pro wrestling is in Memphis. And Jeff and his family and Jerry Jarrett put together some of the greatest wrestling shows of all time. Uh, when we go back to Memphis, I'm hopeful Dave Brown will join us. Uh, I'd love to see Dave Brown anytime. Uh, he, what, a, what a great legend, what a great man, and what great memories the Jarrett family has created and what a special legacy they've carved out in the pro wrestling business. It was a real loss this year to lose Jerry Jarrett. And uh, I think Jeff Jarrett is such a great credit to his family's legacy. He's great, great to have Jeff in the office. He's still just a great wrestler and I loved having him out there. And it was great for him to be out there for a big moment with the acclaimed and Dennis Rodman. That was pretty cool. So I, I, I have a lot of time for Jeff Jarrett. I think he's great. Over here, Tony. A few more. Kevin Kelton, Sports Key Wrestling. Obviously, Tony mentioned the success in these events, but how does that affect the future? Uh, you guys are entering a window here where there's a possibility for another media relationship for the AEW brand as a television brand with premium content. Obviously, streaming options are becoming wildly uh, optional for a lot of people, core cutting, all those different things. How does the last week improve AEW as a media property for different media partners that you could work with in the future or the ones you work with? Well, I think it's definitely huge milestones, huge business metrics we've created. I mean, any media property in the world is going to take notice when you tell them you just set the record for the most tickets sold for any wrestling event ever all time. That's a big deal. People don't want to be in business with a company like that. And now we've shown we can expand the pay-per-view calendar. Uh, it's six and counting, and now we'll go to seven with Wrestle Dream. I think we found something really, really special uh, with what we did here. Wembley Stadium all in and keeping the traditional live Labor Day weekend in Chicago. I knew there'd be a market for it and I knew we could deliver great shows back to back. I think a lot of people questioned it, but that's why I really stopped buying into that discourse. I really don't think there's any correlation between the discourse going into these pay-per-views and the quality of them. Look at the Forbidden Door last year. It was the show of the year. I don't think, first of all, like people criticizing the bill, like what? You couldn't have put a human being in my chair and dealt with all the injuries and have everything make sense and be logical. Like, oh, hey, in four days, like, Cole and Punk and Danielson will all get injured and be out for, it's like, for the, all those shows and all that. Like, nobody planned for that. I actually had really good stuff called. I've, I, a couple people have, uh, over the year, at your plus since Forbidden Door, I've told what I had called for all the injuries. It was some of the best stuff ever. And you just have to make up new stuff and do your best and put new great new matches together when things change. And I think, like I said, there's very little correlation between the quality of these events and the discourse about like the build towards them because I think uh, the business really shows otherwise that like they have really been developed in a way that has done business and accomplished things that nobody has come in as an outsider, as an independent producer and done in the pro wrestling business in at least 20 years. And I think, uh, you know, it's really exciting because I think it's great for the wrestlers. And it's obviously, I think, really great to create so many jobs, create spots for wrestlers, create backstage jobs in wrestling. There's hundreds of people feeding their families in pro wrestling just from AEW. And I think we've pumped up an economy around us. When you do 
few shows on like AEW All In and All Out. How many shows, frankly, have piggybacked off us and run events uh, that benefited from us? And you know, good companies too. Ref Pro is a reputable wrestling company. I like their product, and they just set their attendance record with the show. And I think a lot of it had to do with them drawing 4,000, probably that we had 81, um, and they were pretty good sense for me. So yeah, uh, I think right now, like when you look at the media landscape, it's really exciting because pro wrestling, that's why I got into uh, AEW because pro wrestling media rights in 2018 were escalating and it made a lot of sense to launch a wrestling promotion. When you looked at the roster, you'd be able to build going into 2019 and the AEW roster is only continue to evolve and get better and right now I think we have the best wrestling roster in the world. Three more, John. Hey, what's going on, Tony? Um, so I actually have a question about Wrestle Dream that's coming up in Seattle. Um, this show is going to be on a Sunday uh, during the NFL season, which is something that you have tried to avoid as much as possible. Um, are you? I know the um, the Full Gear show is going to be on Saturday, but a great question. With these new pay-per-views that are going to be coming up, obviously, so you want to expand it, obviously expand it to seven. Will you be competing on Sundays with the NFL, which obviously is a very, very big competitor in, in the sense of the TV rights and everything? I don't want to do it as often as I can that I'm going to not try to compete with the NFL because the NFL is the biggest media property on the planet, the most powerful media entity in the world, not just sports, but all, all media. And definitely the NFL is king. And on October 1st, I felt like it was a special opportunity to honor a special legend in wrestling because October 1st is the date last year that Antonio Inoki passed away. I really don't think I'd be in this position if Antonio Inoki hadn't been a pioneer in pro wrestling and certainly uh, during a period in pro wrestling where there wasn't really a strong challenger brand promotion, New Japan Pro Wrestling probably stepped up more than any other promotion and uh, put on great wrestling matches of different styles and uh, helped build a lot of great careers and a lot of people in AEW now wrestled for New Japan and, and many of uh, the great wrestlers in AEW, many of the top stars were actually Inoki protégés like Brian Danielson, like Samoa Joe, Katsuyori Shibata and others. And I love working with Rocky Romero. Rocky Romero is an Inoki student himself so those are some of Inoki's Last protege is actually Rocky, Samoa Joe, and Brian Danielson. And uh, October 1st is a Sunday. Our next pay-per-view is during the NFL season. Uh, and I very rarely will put on shows during the NFL season on a Sunday, but this is a unique opportunity to honor a unique legend in wrestling, which is Antonio Inoki. I can't say every Wrestle Dream is going to be able to be on October 1st based on where it falls in the week, but at least for the first one, I really thought, let's do it on October 1st uh, to honor the memory of somebody really special, a great promoter. I hope, uh, you know, I, I think it's important to honor the legacy of the great promoters before us. I went to, you know, I was asked about Jeff Jarrett. I, I made sure that uh, I was there. I wanted to be there with Jeff when his father passed away. Jerry Jarrett's a great legend, and I wanted to be there as a wrestling promoter uh, to pay tribute to one of the great promoters of all time, one of the most prolific people in the history of the wrestling business. The Jarrett's are a great family. Jeff's an awesome part of the AEW. He's a great executive, a great wrestler here. And, his father's one of the greatest promoters of all time, and I have a lot of respect for him, and I have a lot of respect for Mr. Inoki and everything he did and uh, helped us get to where we are. So that's why it's October 1st this year, because that's an important day. Thanks, man. So Tony over here, second to last one. Sure. Brian Rose, Good Karma Wrestling. How much was the Orange Cassidy title run a message to some of the Orange naysayers? It's not a, I think it was about Orange Cassidy being one of our top stars, and Orange Cassidy really elevating a championship to the status of being one of the top championships in the sport. And by the time this show was over, John Moxley walked out as the champion. I felt like you could make the case the international championship is one of the top championships in all of wrestling. No championship has gained more ground to be in that spot and to be a pay-per-view main event championship. And John Moxley is one of the big stars in all of wrestling. And the fact that he was chasing that title and chasing Orange Cassidy and John Moxley, one of the big stars in wrestling, now has a lot to live up to as the international champion, which is amazing because Orange Cassidy set such a great precedent. So I've always believed in Orange Cassidy from the very beginning. It's cool to be back in Chicago where it began because Orange Cassidy 
came so far, and Orange Cassidy, people might forget, he really put himself on the map as a star in Chicago at the original revolution three and a half years ago against Pac. And like I said, it was the most watched match ever in AEW. Over 40 million people have watched that match. And Orange Cassidy didn't come out the winner that night either, but he advanced himself and became an even bigger star. And tonight, I think it legitimized in another way. Orange Cassidy has had this amazing run, and this might have been the best match yet, and one of the greatest runs I've ever seen, and certainly one of the greatest runs we've ever had here in AEW. And, uh, if it had to end, there's no more fitting way after all these great championships. Orange Cassidy was just getting more and more broken down and the workload was really wearing on him. Uh, I think it made sense for John Moxley to be the person to shut it down and for it to be here at All Out to put an exclamation point on the biggest week ever in AEW, one of the most successful weekends any promotion's ever had in pro wrestling as far as putting on a great week of shows over seven days and for us hitting new heights as a business. Thanks. Uh, I have a question right here, Tom. Steven Milhausen from the Zone, a great show tonight, so many games. You look at the magnitude of all that. You look at the unfortunate situation that happened during the week this week, and you look at a lot of people would say it was a very questionable show tonight. You guys knocked it out of the park. Would you say this is, is it fair to say this is the most challenging week for you personally and professionally? I think it's been the most challenging week for me personally and professionally, but it's not all down to wrestling either. There's a lot going on. There's been a lot of highs. Like, I think it's been hard to get to this point. There's been challenges in other sports. It's been a hard week and to, you know, it's a busy week for me. It's the, one of the busiest weeks of my life, I think, ever, it's fair to say, but really this week's busy for me every year when you have the English football transfer window, in this case, the Premier League transfer window closed this week. So. I have not slept a lot this week anyway. It's been a busy week to begin with. It. There's absolutely a lot going on, but to put on great shows like All In and All Out and be putting together the formats and going over all the details, producing the shows, uh, and also putting together four TV shows with uh, Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, and the Ring of Honor show and produce you know, this great show tonight, I think, and following up on everything, plus with everything going on, yeah, I think it's been probably the hardest week ever, but that's not all because of wrestling either, uh, or things that are related to wrestling, there's been a lot going on in other sports too, and it's been a busy time, and uh, I, I'm really proud of everybody around me uh, who's helped make it, uh, helped make it great, and I'm really proud of everybody in AEW. I think tonight was a big success. Last week was like the most important thing we've ever done, but then coming here tonight, it was like everybody who's come up here and said, it was a lot of pressure to follow up on All In because it went so incredibly well. So to have people be talking about how great tonight was, you know, it's a great feeling. And, uh, but also a really busy time of year for me because this time of year also to a lot of people all over the world, like, you know, the Premier League transfer window is a big, big story all over the world. And people follow that really closely. That was a really busy time for me. So I was pretty much working 24 hours a day, literally, uh, for several days. I mean, I'm not even joking. Like, I went a couple days where I didn't sleep. And uh, it was hard, but I think we got a lot of important things done. And, uh, you know, important to get players in, get transactions done in Fulham, but also to keep important players for us. And that's also was a, a long week. So uh, there were a lot of things happening, and I really think from a wrestling standpoint, everybody hit it out of the park, so I'm so proud of everybody in AEW, everybody went out and had a match on TV or pay-per-view this week, did a great job. The wrestling was outstanding, and the production team was stretched and stressed and forced to deliver in a way they've never been, because they had to go deliver a show on the stage, a spectacle of which they never dreamed we'd be doing in really uh, unprecedented territory, something that big. It's the biggest wrestling show of all time in many ways when you look at it, it's the most fans ever that bought a ticket for any show. So we've never done anything like that. Not only that, but it was across the ocean and other continents. So it was a, it was a big workload then to come back here and put on another one. Uh, I'm just so proud of everybody that it worked out and I think it was a, a real testament to AEW and certainly uh, coming into this year, people wondered if we could grow the company, make AEW bigger and better than it's ever been. I think we have and did, and I'm really excited going forward. I think we got asked about where does this uh, 
Where does this imply we're going? Where does this uh, lead us to in you know, the next few years as far as business, media rights, I got asked. I think it's really exciting for us because what we did this week uh, bodes really well to grow the company and hopefully keep getting bigger. And I think hopefully uh, it'll be very lucrative media rights renewals for us and we can keep growing the company and expanding and creating jobs and uh, taking care of a lot of people. Because uh, Some of you were at both shows, I believe, and uh, that's pretty cool. And also, uh, look, I just really appreciate even if you don't make it to the show, all of you cover wrestling, and I think that's a really cool thing to do, whether it's your full-time job, a part-time job, that's awesome. I think uh, there's no better way, whether it's making a living, or you do it for fun, or a hobby, or whether uh, this is a childhood dream for you, like it is for me to work in wrestling, I think it's cool that we all get to do it, and uh, everybody here tonight, I believe, got to see a great show, so I'm proud of that, and now, uh, very excited for Wrestle Dream, and before then, also AEW Grand Slam. I think it's going to be a great AEW Grand Slam. We built something really special in New York, and I'm very excited about that. And uh, hopefully, we'll see some of you uh, in the uh, weeks to come. Jim, are we doing a Grand Slam scrum? We were no Grand Slam. No, we had in the past, in a sense, you can't. Hey, that'd be fun. If maybe something at Grand Slam would be great. There's a lot of great New York yeah. media. That could be something to think about. And certainly, uh, see you all at Wrestle Dream. I hope you're all invited to Wrestle Dream. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's going to be cool doing back to back, having a collision and a uh, pay per view in Seattle. I'm really excited. Anytime a new market like Seattle gets a first time pay per view, I think it's a really big deal. And I'm really excited. The Wrestle Dream tickets wrap. I think they go on sale this week. They do Friday. They go Friday, is there a pre-sale? Pre-sale pre on Thursday. Pre-sale Thursday? There you go. I guess. Worst kept secret in wrestling. There you go. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. I really appreciate it. It was an honor and pleasure to do uh, AEW All Out in Chicago again. It's a great tradition. Uh, thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for covering AEW All In. God bless all of you. It's great to see so many of your faces. And uh, hopefully see you all either at Grand Slam or Wrestle Dream. Full year or something soon. Thanks again.